What's going on, Salt Strong Nation? Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about the bull redfish migration. I received a question from one of our new insiders who's new to fishing in general, and he didn't know too much about bull redfish, and he knew that there was a big surge during the migration and that a lot of people catch them when they do migrate. So I wanted to make this video not just to help him, but anybody who's wondering about the migration, whether you're a veteran or a new fisherman, to understand the where, the when, and the why of the bull redfish migration. So let's go ahead and dive in. So let's go ahead and start with the when of the migration, and that's actually triggered by colder weather. So typically, it's going to be in the fall, switching from that warm weather to the cold weather. That's what triggers that migration. It's going to be different depending on where you live in the country. So the mid-Atlantic typically experiences the spawn first because we experience the colder weather first. And moving down into Florida, it'll be a little bit staggered behind the mid-Atlantic. So you know you'll experience it a couple weeks later. And then on the Gulf side, you know you're moving over into some warmer water. So that temperature does not drop as fast. You could be a week or two behind the East Coast if you're in the Gulf in West Coast Florida or the East Coast of Texas. So it's really going to depend on where you live. I'm not gonna give you guys a specific temperature range because it's very different uh, depending on where you live. So really what we're going to see, and I'll just give you some specific time ranges, in the mid-Atlantic, typically the spawn will take place in early September through early October. And then it's going to peak off you know, after a couple of weeks and then die down and the east coast of florida we're going to see it happening you know in late october possibly early november and then going into the west coast of florida and texas just because you guys have similar temperature ranges we're going to see that the spawn is actually not going to start until early november possibly even late november and then it's going to peak off you know a couple weeks after that so in texas there have even been reports of the spawn not taking place until the winter time so you know in the december months so it really is going to depend on the temperatures that year Year. It's, a, it's a lot of based on the weather. So you need to understand what the typical ranges have been in past years. You can go to your local tackle shop and ask when the spawns have really kicked off and what those temperatures have been. The best knowledge is local knowledge, but understanding the specific ranges will help you narrow down what time frames you really want to go target these big reds. So now to touch briefly on the why of this migration, and this part's really important to understand when we start looking at where we're gonna find these big bulls, really they're moving to spawn. This is the best time of year for those big females to spawn. On. They're going to move in schools of 200, 300, up to 400 fish in a single school all the way to the area that's going to provide the best dispersion of their eggs when they do spawn. And there's a lot of really big bait fish that are inshore that are going to be providing them with a really good high calorie meal. So this is really, you know, when they take their long spawning journey, they're going to need a lot of, you know, high calorie food to keep up with what's going on. They're going to be very hungry, very aggressive. So this is just ideal conditions for them to be moving. You know, there's a lot of good food for them to eat and it's just optimal conditions for them to spawn. So now when we look at the where of where these fish are going to be, they're gonna be in the passes and the inlets. This is gonna ensure that those egg clusters from the redfish are as widespread as possible. If they were all to just go lay their eggs in one single area, there would be a lot of competition amongst the baby red drum for food and most of them would likely die. So being able to spawn in an area like a pass or an inlet where the eggs can get distributed over multiple areas and make sure that there's several ranges of different redfish that don't have to compete as much for food ensures that the population of the redfish is gonna have a healthy and big stock of the next generation. So understanding why these fish are moving to the passes and inlets is very important because then we can see where the highest amount of current is gonna be moving. If you have to choose between two passes or inlets, I would choose the one that gets more current flow just because there's gonna be a lot more fish that move there to ensure that their population is secured for the next generation. So that pretty much covers the size science behind the migration. If you guys would like to learn more about how to catch them, we have tons of tutorials on how to do so with cut bait, live bait, artificials. You've even seen some of the footage in this video, catching them on the slam shading. And it's really easy to get on these big fish. And if you would like to see those videos, visit us at saltstrong.com where we have tons of courses, tutorials, and you can actually even get 20% off of the rods and reels that you're going to need to target these big fish for the upcoming fall season. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You were able to learn something about the redfish migration. And I hope to see it in the insider community community catching some really big redfish. So guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video. There's something about the water that'll give you peace all by yourself or with your family. Live salt strong and wear the line today.